Today, we're going to be taking a look at the remainder of the Quest 2 accessories that Wazasine sent to me for review. In case you missed the first video, that one will be linked right up here in the title card. So go ahead and check out that video, but make sure you come back to this one because I have some pretty good accessories here. We have a silicone skin set, a pistol grip accessory, and a head strap that I'm very excited about. So without further ado, let's get right into it. The first product we're going to take a look at is the silicone skin set. The unboxing experience was nothing spectacular. Inside the packaging, you are greeted with a ton of silicone pieces for just about every aspect of the Quest 2. It even includes a couple of different lanyards to use with the touch controls and a protective rubberized lens cover. The material does feel really good while handling it, but it is the kind of silicone material that collects dust and hair and just about everything else in its vicinity, which to me is kind of a bummer. But hey, I guess you can't have it all. They are of good quality though. They are thick enough to protect the Quest 2 and the touch controls from minor bumps, scuffs, and even very small drops. But I wouldn't go doing drop tests if you really value your Quest 2. One of the best things about the skin set though is that it will keep your Quest 2 clean. With the Quest 2 being an all-white design, you may find yourself with an off-white or downright black controls over time. And yes, you could spend some time cleaning the Quest 2 with some rubbing alcohol and a cotton ball, this skin set will stop that from ever needing to be a thing. While the skin's material is a dust magnet, it is much easier to wipe down and keep clean. Fitting the skins onto the Quest 2 and the touch controls was an absolute breeze. The skins are a bit snug, but you can easily stretch them out where you need them in order to get them to the correct place. Another thing the skin set is good for is giving you a little bit of extra grip with the touch controllers. Sometimes I find myself losing some grip with the controls after a long session of playing Beat Saber or Pistol Whips, with my hands getting just a tad bit sweaty. But I gotta say, after using the controls with the skin, I really don't notice that being a problem after a long play session. If you're looking to protect your Quest 2 or just looking to minimize cleaning while improving your grip, then this skin set is definitely a good option for you. This set is going for about $30 on Amazon, which is actually a pretty good deal, and honestly, a much higher quality than the less expensive ones out there. I own some of the cheaper ones, and I gotta say, these are the best of the bunch. Alright, so now we're moving on to something that I think is a little bit more of a novelty. You may not think so, but I definitely do. Here we have a pistol grip accessory that turns your touch controls into, well, a pistol. The only thing you find in the box is the accessory itself, and that's it. It comes broken down into a few pieces for each of the grips, but it's pretty easy to figure out and get it all together. The unfortunate thing with this accessory is that you can't use the silicone grips with the pistol accessory, which to me is a bit of an oversight on Wallerstein's part. This accessory, while it is novel, does add a little bit of weight to the front of the controllers. I'm guessing the idea here is to give you a little bit more of a realistic feel, which Wallerstein only partly succeeded in. I only say partly because the grips make the controller a bit too front heavy. For shorter play sessions, you won't find many issues with this. But for longer play sessions, you're going to have a harder time ignoring your forearm strain once they start to burn under the weight of the grip. If it was just a little bit more balanced or maybe a little bit lighter, this would honestly be a lot better. It's also strange to play a game that has a lot of rifles or shotguns while using the pistol grip accessory. It just feels awkward and clunky. Your offhand grip seems to get in the way while reloading or charging the firearm in the game, which can lead to smacking the controls together once in a while if you're not that careful. The pricing on this is not that terrible though. I feel like the price should be between $17 to $20 instead of the $26 that's going for on Amazon, but it's overall a fun little product and not a bad little product either, but just doesn't add much to the VR experience as a whole. But it is fun though. Alright, and now we're down to the final product and this is the one that I am most excited about. This head strap has a 5000 mAh battery built into the back headrest, and to me, this is great because you don't have to buy another accessory and have another one hanging from the back of your headset. It's all self-contained in a nice neat little package. While yes, we do have an official battery head strap from Meta, but that one comes in at a whopping $109, whereas the Wazistein version is only $40 on Amazon. It's not all sunshine and rainbows though, as there were some compromises that had to be made in order to get it down to that price point. Unboxing the head strap was very straightforward. You have the head strap itself and an instruction manual. I am very glad to see that the head strap comes pre-assembled, which if you saw my last video was a big grip of mine with the other Wallerstein head strap. The overall look and feel of this product is actually pretty good. The padding is a little bit more robust on this head strap and is decently comfortable at that. The rear part of this head strap is smaller than the one found on the previous Wallerstein head strap, which is a good thing in my opinion. The other strap had a really bulbous rear end with no flex to speak of, but with this one being a little bit smaller, it cradles the back of your head a lot better without leaving a gap at the base of your skull. This resulted in a much more comfortable and enjoyable experience. The side rails are fully adjustable with a stretchy band and velcro strapping which allows you to get the perfect amount of tension on your face. With the battery being built into the back of the head strap, I can see how trying to fit a ratcheting mechanism back here would be a little bit problematic. It's not impossible though as the Meta Elite head strap proves, but in order to hit that price point, this is one of the things that had to be compromised. 
The battery life that you get out of this head strap is actually pretty good. You get around an additional 2-3 to three hours of playtime, which is about what I was experiencing while using it. I ended up getting around 5 hours of total playtime with this thing, which is pretty impressive honestly. While I was testing it, I used a mix of games that were being played natively off the Quest 2 and some other titles that I was running off my PC while using Airlink. The battery life is going to be dependent on what titles you play and how you use the Quest 2, just like with the internal battery. The more intensive titles will tend to suck up more power and drain the battery quickly versus the more laid-back experiences. So as far as the battery life goes, your mileage may vary. The top strap, unfortunately, is just as anemic as the previous head strap. It serves its purpose, but as a consumer, I would expect something a little beefier. Again, I just feel like I'm going to damage it by installing it onto my Quest 2. This is definitely one area I feel like Wallerstein should address in any revised versions of this head strap. The other thing I'm not really a fan of though, which you may have already noticed, is the charging cable that plugs into the Quest 2 off the back of the head strap is fixed to the head strap itself. You cannot remove it without damaging the head strap or the battery. This could prove to be problematic in the future of owning this product. If for any reason the attached charging cable gets damaged, you would have to replace the entire head strap, which to me is something I would not want to do. There's honestly no reason why there couldn't be a second USB Type-C port at the back of the head strap, and just include a small USB Type-C cable in the box. That way, in the unfortunate event that you actually break the charging cable, you can just switch out the cable, move on, and continue using the product without having to order a new one. That would be a much better implementation in my opinion. Overall, if you're looking for a head strap with a battery pack built in, this is a pretty decent option. Is it perfect? Not by any means. It has its quirks and shortcomings, but for the price and performance that you get out of it, it's a pretty solid option in my opinion. If you were interested in picking up any of these products that I reviewed here today, then head on down to the description below. There you'll find the official Wallerstein website and some Amazon affiliate links which do help out the channel. If you want to see another Elite Style Head Strap review that I did recently, then click on the video that's on the screen right now. And until next time guys, I'm Joshua for Love of Games, signing out. Have a great day.